In the world of aviation history, few aircraft evoke as much fascination and controversy as the Tu-144, originally a Cold War icon, often dubbed the Soviet Concorde. This supersonic jetliner was born from a race between superpowers, but in 2025, the story takes an unexpected twist. Military engineers and aerospace experts have revisited the Tu-144 platform reviving, redesigning, and repurposing it not as a civilian transport, but as a next-generation military reconnaissance and high-speed command aircraft. This is not just a restoration, it's a transformation. Welcome to the rebirth of the Tu-144, now integrated into modern Russian military strategy, and you're watching this exclusive deep dive here on Military Might. Let's start with the origins. The Tu-144 first flew in 1968 becoming the world's first supersonic commercial airliner beating Concorde by a narrow margin. Despite this historic achievement, the aircraft suffered from safety concerns, limited range, and excessive fuel consumption. Its commercial life was short lived However, in 2025, the Russian Ministry of Defense has found new value in its supersonic DNA. Why bring back an aircraft from the 20th century? The answer lies in technological evolution. In 2025, aerospace materials, AI systems, avionics, and propulsion technology have advanced far beyond what existed in the 1970s. This enables Russia to do what was once unthinkable re-engineered Tu-144 into a supersonic multi-role military aircraft, now codenamed Tu-144M Falcon. The Tu-144M is no longer just a transport or experimental platform. It's now envisioned as a long-range strategic recon aircraft, capable of penetrating hostile airspace at speeds exceeding Mach 2.3. While stealth has been the trend in most recent aircraft, the Russian approach with the Tu-144M is speed and altitude. Think of it as a modern-day SR-71 Blackbird, but bigger, faster, and digitally enhanced. Under the hood, the engines have been completely replaced. The original NK-144 turbojets are gone. In their place are next-generation turbofan ramjet hybrids, derived from scramjet development programs. These new engines are more efficient, capable of both high subsonic cruising and sustained supersonic flight without afterburners. This not only boosts performance but also reduces the heat, signature a crucial factor when operating in radar sensitive environments. The fuselage design has been strengthened with titanium alloys and next gen composite materials to handle thermal expansion and reduce radar reflectivity. Internally, the cockpit has gone fully digital. Military grade glass panels, helmet mounted displays, and AI assisted navigation give the crew unparalleled situational awareness. The aircraft can be operated by two pilots, but it also includes autonomous override systems for unmanned operation in higher risk zones. Sensor wise, the Tu 144M is packed. Long range synthetic aperture radar, infrared tracking systems, and electronic signal intelligence arrays turn it into a flying spy station. It can operate at altitudes above 70,000 feet, where very few interceptors can reach, and even if they try, its sheer speed makes interception almost impossible. But this isn't just a spy plane. In select configurations, the Tu-144M can carry command and control modules, allowing it to serve as a flying war room. During electronic warfare scenarios, it can coordinate drone swarms, missile batteries, and airborne assets in real The Tu-144M acts as a nerve center above the battlefield. Moreover, a limited number of Tu-144M variants are designed for high-value personnel transport. Imagine generals or intelligence operatives needing to travel from Moscow to Vladivostok, even Damascus within two hours, under heavy electronic protection. The Tu-144M makes that not just possible, but routine. Now, of course, there are drawbacks. The aircraft's massive size and signature make it less suitable for frontline stealth missions. Its maintenance costs are high, and the operational ceiling, while impressive, is not unreachable for advanced anti-air systems. But Russia is betting that speed and altitude combined with electronic jamming and decoys will keep the Tu-144M safe during critical missions. So far, only two prototype Tu-144M aircraft have been flown. The first test flight took place in early March 2025 from the Zhukovsky airfield. It reached Mach 2.1 during a 40-minute test run, with real-time telemetry streamed to military observers. According to insiders, the flight was a success validating the hybrid engines, avionics integration, and aerodynamic stability at high speeds. By mid-2026, Russia plans to deploy a small fleet of Tu-144Ms for strategic operations, particularly over vast and contested regions such as the Arctic and Central Asia. Satellite imagery has already spotted construction of dedicated hangars for the Falcon program, hinting at long-term deployment plans. The global reaction has been mixed. Some analysts see it as a symbolic gesture away for Russia to flex its technological muscle. Others see real strategic value in the ability to deliver military assets or gather intelligence at unmatched speeds. Either way, 
it's a bold move, that has captured the attention of defense agencies worldwide. Dot, what does the future hold for the Tu-144M? Could we see other nations replicate this approach? Could supersonic aircraft return to military dominance in the age of hypersonics and stealth? That remains to be seen. But one thing is clear, the Tu-144 is no longer a museum piece. It's it, a weapon of the future, reborn in 2025 and ready to shape a new era of aerial warfare. Stay tuned as we continue to track the progress of the Tu-144M and other breakthrough military projects. If you're passionate about cutting-edge defense tech, supersonic flight, and geopolitical strategy, make sure you subscribe to Military Might. We've got more deep dives, analysis, and updates coming your way. This is Military Might where power meets innovation in the skies.